Hi, I'm Mark Malone, and welcome to Meatheads. Today on our podcast, we'll be discussing COVID protocols, post-Christmas nutrition, and Instagram fitness attention seekers. First Nations Wireless is now First Nations Fiber. You've seen our team working through the community to get you connected. From the new development to the OCR, from the 207 to Clay Mountains, FN Fiber makes fiber optic internet easy for everyone. Come into Gonhawaga soon. Visit radio.fnfiber.com to sign up today. So, it is January, and we are the Meatheads. Joining me, as always, my friend, my compatriot in training, and a hell of a good trainer, Derek DeLille, CEO of Total Fitness here in Gunawage. Hello. So, Derek um, is, is quite fortunate in that he is one of the very few gym owners on the provincial, I guess, geographic territory that is allowed to operate um, freely and as he sees fit. Um, and so that's really cool. So I wouldn't wanted to start our podcast this week by saying how much I've enjoyed working out at Total Fitness uh, in the times when a lot of Quebec gyms have been closed and uh, what a great atmosphere it is there. So I thought we could talk about that for a minute and give uh, give Total Fitness a little bit of a pat on the back. What do you think, Derek? How's that sound? You know, it sounds, it's, it's actually really nice that we were actually able to open up. We were closed for about two weeks and um, a lot of people, there's a lot of complaints that we need our, our mental health. We need our, our physical activity and just being locked up in your house and not being able to go anywhere. It was stressful for, for a lot of people. Like I was getting messages and we should contact the task force. We should contact people that are in charge. We need to work out. And most of us won't do it and we're going to get depressed because we're not going to work out. We're going to probably gain weight and it's going to cause a, cause, cause issues for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So when I, when we had the green light to go, the, the gym filled up immediately, like right away, everybody's ready for their spots, ready to come in. Um, maybe a little bit overzealous, but they're, 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 they're all in great moods now. Right. And, and um, that is, is a great way for us to even segue into our next topic which is uh, Blue Monday. We are recording this podcast on Monday, January 17th. For the uninitiated, that is the third Monday of January uh, this year in 2022. It usually means we're, as we're, we're you know, Christmas and the, the festive feelings of the holidays are as far away as they're going to get. And those are no longer lingering with us. And we're faced with six more weeks of winter. There's 20 inches of snow on the ground. The weekend was minus 20 all weekend. Um, it, it, it is Blue Monday and it is psychologically speaking, as some psychiatrists bef- you know, who are much more educated than I am have claimed, is the most depressing day of the year. So Derek, how do we continue to press on in our fitness journeys when that deck is stacked against us? See, that's a really good and a very tough question, especially when most gyms are closed. Um, like, I, like I said before, they don't have an outlet to do anything. You know, they don't want to go outside. It's too cold. You're right. I tried going for a walks with my, uh, with, uh, with my son and it was just too cold. It was bone cold. So we came back in and like, he was getting kind of agitated. What do we do dad? There's nowhere to go. And the gyms are closed at the time and we couldn't go anywhere. And it, it, it's rough on a lot of people because after the holidays, what else do you have to look forward to in January and possibly February? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you're just looking for for March. You're looking for spring. You're looking for the summer weather because once Christmas is over, most people don't really have, you know, another holiday to look forward to mm-hmm. until spring weather. Exactly. People, and people want to get into the gym so they look great for spring and summer and, and beaches and pool parties and what have you. And when they're restricted into starting the new year off right, you know, that's a lot of people's goals. So sometimes if you're, if you, if you're restricted in doing it, you're, you're kind of walking to, into a door. Mm-hmm. Um, I would even go so far as to say that for a lot of people, that daily exercise um, not only is helpful to their mental health, but integral to their mental health. Uh, my daughter, for instance, I just to use as an example, uh, she's very much like me. And if she and I don't move our bodies and exert in, in some hard demanding fashion in a day it's we don't feel good we don't Mm -hmm. we're agitated we're anxious you know we can't settle in and relax it's hard to enjoy food um and i'm the same way now i'm blessed very blessed in that i've put together quite a well-equipped home studio in my home i have number of cardio available uh cardio options available and a ton of weights so no problem we have everything we need 
problem is we don't want to do it there. You know, we, for us, for my daughter and I, our third place in life, you have home, you have work and you have the gym. When now my work is mostly at my home, my home is at my home. And now my gym is also at my home. That's not a recipe for a healthy lifestyle. It's not. You would think that's the perfect environment because a lot of people uh, envy other people that have home gyms because like, oh, you have a home gym. This is awesome. Um, if I had my own home gym, I'd be working out every day. I'd be in shape. But in reality, it's not always like that because if you're stuck in your house, it's kind of like a punishment. You're punished. Stay in your house. Work out at home. Eat at home. Watch TV at home. You know, zoom your friends at home. Yeah, it's like being grounded as a teenager. That's what it feels like. And, exactly. and and as an adult with all our freedoms without any restrictions, it's 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 tough for a lot of people. They mm -hmm. feel like they don't have the power to do what they want to do. Cause um off, off the reserve there's a curfew at ten o'clock. Right. There was a curfew. Right. So when I'm driving back from the gym, because my son likes to work out late at night at, at my gym because we're open. Yeah. I'd have to kind of rush home for right. 10 o'clock. Yeah, that's so like, everything's upset. Yeah, it's like, um, mm -hmm. you know, I got to be home before mom gets mad at me type of thing. Just a news item to to, to bring out, uh, just to interject quickly, the curfew is actually being pulled today. So yeah. I, I was, the last day was last night, I believe. As of today, there's no more curfew in Quebec. Um, and, you know, they said it would be the first thing to go. And, uh, well, it, it wasn't, but still, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's there's, it's gone. Yeah. Well, that, that's a good thing then. That way no one feels like they're being rushed to get home, you know. Um, I just hope other things are opening up as well because, you know, like the gym is a fantastic place to be, but a lot of people just want to go out and just be entertained, watch a movie. Mm -hmm. And even even my kids are like walking around in circles. They've been off school for maybe almost a month now, it feels mm -hmm. like. And like, Dad, I want to go watch Spider-Man. I want to go watch a movie. I'm like, we can't. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you tell your kids we can't? We're not allowed, mm -hmm. <laughs> you but, know? Yeah, my kids go to uh, public schools in Point Claire, And it, as today, January 17th, was supposed to be their first day back. And they had a snow day. So no school, <laughs> snow day. Guess what? You're, you're stuck at home once more. So my kids are like yours, probably, you know, chomping at the bit to get back out there and mm -hmm. do their sports. Fortunately for me, and for my kids, my kids are sport students. So my daughter is a, an elite hockey player and my son's an elite football player. And they both uh, spend two hours a day doing their sport and training for their sport. So once school reopens again, you know, a little bit of the pressure on me to be able to find avenues for my kids to move their bodies uh, is, is will be taken off, which is, which is a little bit of pressure off my head, which feels really good. So we're going to move along to actually... Uh, to from gyms being closed to gyms being open, I thought. So let's talk a little bit about COVID protocols in the gym. Now, Derek's facility, Total Fitness, is unique in that it books private clients in their bubble for an hour at a time. So there is next to no sharing of space. Mm -hmm. That being said, COVID protocols in the gym, do you buy it? Do you not? What are your feelings? Because when I was working out in Quebec gyms before uh, they were locked down on December 20th, you were allowed to take off your mask while you're doing a cardio machine. Cardio machines were not distanced. They were together, all in the same space. And you had people sharing, you know, all kinds of particles for a very long period of time. Tell me how you feel about masks. Well, to be honest, you know, by my, my own personal opinion, like I, I'm sure the mask might be helping, you know, keep the, uh, the spread at a, at a manageable level. Uh, exactly. But while doing this interview, we, we need to wear masks everywhere we go and just having a mask on just feels like I'm breathing my own air in feels almost claustrophobic in a sense. So I can't imagine somebody being at the, at the gym, working out with a mask and, and trying to catch their breath with this mask on, um, will it prevent the spread? Possibly. Has it prevented spread? I don't know. Right. That's one of those questions that can raise up a lot of uh, controversies, maybe a lot of mm -hmm. discussion. Oh, there's a lot. Uh, there's pros, a lot of cons. Yeah, there's a lot of conjecture on mask wearing. So, so I'm like, benefit versus the cost. If the gyms are closing, can't work out, is there more benefit to that person as opposed to going to the gym? Possibly catching something, you know what I mean? Like right. they're, they're dealing with their own depressions at home. Mm -hmm. uh, and unless you work out and you're active, you'll never understand what that means. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, you don't need to go to the gym, just stay home. For a lot of people, you can't. You need to be active. And shoveling your driveway or running up the road is not 
It's not the same thing. It's not the same. It's, it's, it's not, not what the they same want. thing at all. No, because it seems that is kind of more like work in a sense. Mm -hmm. But if you're at the gym and you're struggling just as much as shoveling, mm -hmm. you, you, there's, there's more benefit to it in, right. in terms of your own mental status, I guess. Mm -hmm. I agree. So it's like, it's one of those tough questions, you know. In your facility, uh, there's disinfectant everywhere. People are encouraged to uh, disinfect their equipment after every after every usage because it's shared, and I do, and I'm and I'm very happy to do so. Um, I feel like for the most part, people who work out in gyms care enough already about other people to look after that. I, you know, there's always the ten percent of people who won't wipe down their stuff or who are kind of gross and whatever and whatever. But for the most part, I find that adults are not bad about cleaning up after themselves. No, I find even at big public gyms when I used to go as a, as a, when I was younger, we always cleaned our benches and when we're done, we always, maybe we didn't spray with the machine, but we actually did wipe it down. Sure. But now we do need to use the spray. So I don't think there's, you know, it just it would make sense. It's common sense. Clean up your machines. Don't, don't spit in the sink. Don't cough in this, in, in, in the garbage can. You know what, what some raunchy people might want to do. That's how yeah. you're going to get everything get spread. If you just, Stay in your bubble, maybe modify your workouts. You're not doing supersets where you're doing a bench press and running over to a lap machine yeah. and, and yeah. vice versa. Just, you yeah. Keep your, like I found I was having a lot of success um, working out with my clients um, in mini, little mini circuits. So I'd grab a set of dumbbells or a kettlebell and you could work out next to a pulley and you get three exercises done, you know, in a very tight space in a very short period of time. So efficiency of time in your workout, that ups the, the metabolic demand and, you know, you're not, spreading disease which is also nice yeah exactly like, like at my gym like you, you see in it it's uh it's not a huge huge place it's 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 a comfortable setting for maybe about 10 people let's say yeah. and we usually only have two or three at a time and most of the workouts depending on the workout it, you're either with a set of dumbbells or a barbell but you're you're not forced to stay in your spot but it just the way that the, the workouts are set up you're there in your spot you grab your dumbbells you do your front squats mm -hmm. uh lean over with maybe heavier weights or lighter weights and do bench over rows do floor pressing. You don't like to walk around all over the gym. You're kind of situated right where you are with your little mat or bench if you want to use the bench. Right. So I try to make the workout so you're not going from one end of the gym all the way to the other end of the gym. Even though you're in the bubble, I still try to keep it. And it, it's a little bit more manageable mm -hmm. as well because some people are, are stronger than others. And I only have like, I think th three racks. Mm -hmm. So if I got four people in there and they have to alternate changing the weights, touching the weights. And I just try to keep it, keep the workouts simple. as simple and separated as, as possible. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that's a benefit whether we're talking about COVID or, or not. Like it's just a, just a good way to ensure, you know, the, the best personal hygiene I think you could possibly come up with. Um, I think for the most part, that's what you're going to see. I know that um, my experience working out at your facility has been, you know, second to none and that everybody in there cleans up. It's always really tidy, fabulous. People are really good about putting their stuff away. It's, uh, it, it's quite an experience. I highly recommend if you haven't, that you should check out Total Fitness. It's uh, a great fitness option here in Gunawage. And, um, you know, frankly, it's it's safe and healthy. So that brings us to um, one of my very next favorite points. So I had the opportunity to work out with our editor-in-chief, Greg Horn, last week a couple of times in, in Total Fitness. What fun we had. And I've had the opportunity a couple of times to get in there on my own and work out as well in, in a private setting. And I remember thinking to myself that I have a decided preference one way or the other uh, about working out with a partner or not. So Derek, I'm going to throw it at you. W when you work out, you like working out with a partner? Do you not? And where's the value? I've always pretty much worked out on my own or, or sometimes when I was starting up, I I'd work out with somebody who was more advanced than, than myself. So I can kind of learn from him as we're training and see what the intensity that he puts in. Because sometimes if I'm working out, I think I'm putting in the, the intensity that's required. But for the advanced athlete that I'm training with, I might be kind of maybe uh, slacking. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll pick it up a little bit. But uh, in the last maybe eight years, let's say, I usually just work out by myself or with my spouse if she's with me uh, or my son. But I'm on my own program. They they do their thing and I do my thing. And I just kind of like that. I like, I like to be focused. I like to know what I'm doing. I like to write down my weights and... I just like to, because sometimes I'll be working out and my, my girlfriend will come up and she'll start talking to me and, and I'm like, I don't want to be rude, but this is my one hour. I'm focused. I got maybe to the extreme, you know, maybe some people are like, what are you being so extreme? You're just working out. You're, you're doing it for fun. I'm doing it for fun, but I have goals. I want to make sure I can push. And if you start 
talking to me, flirting with me. I'm just, it, it, it takes me away from my, my one your hour zone. Old, my zone. Yeah. Exactly. And when you're squatting or benching and you're groaning and you're spitting, well, we don't spit because. Right. No spitting. <laughs> no That's spitting. for people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but no, you know, I mean, when you're, when you're just grinding it out, you don't want somebody to say, Hey, well, what's for supper tonight? Like, I don't know. I'm working out. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, I, I like my, my private moments when I work out just mm -hmm. to be by myself and mm -hmm. focus in and just focus. Right. I, I do both and I do it regularly because, um, Lately, to get my son moving, I train with him in my home gym, if I have the opportunity. Um, and occasionally, I bring my daughter to your facility. The two of us work out together. Now, my son and I will do the same program. My daughter and I will work out like you and your kids or your, your girlfriend. Uh, we'll work out in each other's orbit, but we won't do exactly the same thing. So she'll do her thing. I'll do mine. After an hour, I'm saying, hey, pack it in. We're ready to go. And she's like, yep. And we get to leave there feeling happy and fulfilled. So yeah, yeah, because you're you're both there for your own reasons, mm -hmm. you know, and you both have your own goals, your own mindset. Like, well, we'll spot each other. We're usually on the same type of program, mm -hmm. so if it's a leg day, we're both doing legs. So if you can just spot. I'll definitely go over. I don't care about my time or whatever. I'll spot mm -hmm. her. You know, we're not uh, we're not at war really. So <laughs> I'll go help her out and come back. But I, I like my focus. And right. I was in there the other day doing legs by myself and wow, what a workout I had. I really enjoyed the trap bar uh, mm. on the deadlift station. That's uh, if for the uninitiated, a trap bar is essentially a bar that allows old people to do deadlifts more easily. And given that I am old people, um, you know, more than happy to just load up the trap bar and, and let loose. They are a lot of fun and um, just make sure to keep your heels on the floor. That's my big one. <laughs> yeah, heels no on the floor, toes. never, no tiptoes, bad for your knees, really bad for your knees. In fact, that's going to be our our, uh, our our fitness tip of the day. When squatting, keep your heels on the floor. Puts a lot of undue pressure on your knees. And uh, tell me a little bit about the difficulty some first-time squatters have keeping those heels down. I'm, 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 I'm happy you said this because I have a girl that comes in, and when she squats, I always notice her heels lift a little bit. So we try to figure out her stance. Like, she has a bad knee. She actually has to wear um, a knee brace. Right. But we, we decided to, okay, open up your stance a little bit. Toes slightly outwards, maybe, maybe that'll help. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I'll put uh, um, a plate or a two by four under yeah. her heels to help her. Cause some people just are not flexible. Yeah, some people angle. just don't mm -hmm. have that, that, that calf flexion to be able to extend their legs all the way and keep those heels down. Yep. But what I found really does help. I have this uh, safety uh, bar squat. It's, it's, it's like a bar that goes on your back, but the handles are actually kind of on the side of your yes, head. Yes. I saw it in your gym the other day. I love that thing. Yep. So it helps a person keep more upright right. and they're able to squat deeper with Without the heel right. lifting, because when the, the bar's on your back and you're and you're stretching your shoulders backward and you're leaning forward and your hips are out, it, it kind of if you're not super flexible and you're not good at squatting like that, you're it it's doesn't gonna, feel good. It's exactly. gonna mess everything yeah, up. no, it's and it's it's a, it presents a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, did you play with Star Wars figurines growing up? Yep. Do you remember how they had the holes in the heels yeah. of their boot to stick them on the play sets? That is the analogy I use with my clients. I said, be a Star Wars figurine. Keep your heels pinned to the playset. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's my favorite one. And so not you're the first one of the first people who actually knew the reference. You know, some people are too young, some people just didn't care. I'm like, well, I feel like the ignorance of Star Wars playsets amongst my clients is galling. That being said, um we would, you know, we would be remiss if we didn't uh, attack a little bit of nutrition today. We had a great discussion downstairs that I thought we would start bouncing off of each other up here in our podcast studio, and it is about nutrition. It's about post-Christmas poundage, carb cycling, protein intake, and what you should be doing. Derek, you were telling me downstairs you aim to take in about 200 grams of protein a day. Why is that for the uninitiated? Well, studies have been shown for a long time that uh, a, gram of, a gram of protein per lean body weight is usually the recommended. It's either a little bit too much or a little bit underneath, so I try to get roughly my, my lean body weight in protein. Um, I used to do very high protein diets and I never really noticed it did anything except make me dehydrated. Um, and it was just costing a fortune to get the extra protein by either food or supplements. And then I started realizing that people recommending, you know, two grams of protein per pound of body weight were usually protein supplement um, manufacturers yes. suggesting this. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, if they're suggesting that much whey protein or protein, they probably have some kind of... Uh, there's a reason for there's that. There's a reason. You know, they want us to keep buying it, just like the creatine. Sure. It's the same season as shampoo people that say rinse and repeat. I know, twice. Why would I have to wash my That guy twice? made shampoo companies so much money. Oh, I'm so sure. Anyway. Yeah. 
And uh, so that's how I, I, I go by. Like sometimes I'll get a little bit less, sometimes I get a little bit more, and it's never really affected me all that much. Now I know some people may say, "Well, you're supposed to have three grams per kilo of body weight, or three grams per lean pound of body weight." Unless there's a a specific study that's saying natural athletes on a regular basis can digest or even use that much protein, then okay, I'll look into it. But right, because nutritionally speaking, there's a school of thought that says to you. You can't digest more than 35 pounds, uh, 35 grams of protein in one one meal or sitting. And so what's going to happen is you're just going to end up wasting that and it's not going to get used. So you've wasted your consumption. Um, do you believe that? You believe in that? I, I, don't. Used, I used to believe that in a long, for a long period of time. So I used to eat the six meals a day, 30 to 40 grams of protein to get my 200 plus protein. And then as I started getting older, I started reading more, studying more, not just listening to the, the gym guys. And some studies were showing um, in, in, in certain situations, like I do intermittent fasting, so I have eight mm -hmm. hours to get my protein in. And I, I need to get roughly 200 grams of protein in eight hours. So sometimes uh, my, my steak at night has like 67 grams For the of record, protein. That's a lot of food. Yeah, it, it's a lot of food. Like right now <laughs> I'm, I'm extremely dieting, so my calories are about a thousand less than what they usually are. So I'm actually, it's actually not so stressful. But I do admit I do take a protein shake with my meals sometimes to get that protein requirement in. Mm -hmm. No, are you a believer in post-workout protein shake? We've had a discussion about Snickers bars in the past, but uh, I, I I am a firm believer in a post-workout protein shake for two reasons. One, it kills my hunger pangs, which I'm going to have, and it makes me feel replenished generally. Thoughts? Yeah, for many years I've I've always done that. If I'm if I'm trying to maintain or grow, I'll have my just either a protein shake after my workout, plain whey protein, or I'll mix up with um, a little bit of milk or bananas. Or usually it's probably milk. It's simple, right. it's effective. Mm -hmm. But in the last three weeks, all I've been doing after my workouts is before I'd have BCAs and afterwards I have BCAs. Now I wouldn't recommend something like this if you're trying to maintain or grow muscle. I'm just trying to yeah. trim down as fast as I can. Right. And just see what happens. Yeah. So I'm 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 kind of experimenting with my with my intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. uh, man manipulating my carbs. So instead of having say 200 to 300 grams of carbs per day for performance and mm -hmm. other goals, I'm actually cutting it down to 100. So my goal isn't to get stronger right now or to build. I just want to see. I just want to see those abs again. Like I was like yeah. oh, 30 again. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. There's no. There is no turning back the clock. Sadly. For the record, Derek and I are both in our 40s. Yeah, 45. So th those present their own unique challenges as mm -hmm. well. We're not 25 anymore, and we can't train as though we are. So speaking of which, I've had this discussion with a lot of my clients this week. Uh, one of my clients specifically wants to do like 40 minutes of cardio per session. And I look at her, and I'm like, well, what do you need me for? You have an elliptical right there. Do 40 minutes of cardio per session. She's like, well, I want it to not be boring. I'm like, well... That's an issue. So cardio versus weights, how do you best structure a workout for a client? Well, for my clients and for myself, like whatever I do for myself, I usually transition to my clients sure. with modifications because mm -hmm. if it, if I find it works for me, you know, maybe it'll work for them. It'll generally work for them. And, and in the many years of me working out, I've never really stepped on the, on the cardio machine other than if I just want to go for a walk or just do something. I've never really focused on uh, just walking cardio. You know, I always suggest if you want to do it, do it outside, get some fresh air. Don't want to treadmill and watch TV. It's just, you know, unless you really need to burn extra calories, go ahead and do it. But the way I, I, I fix up my workouts is usually you get the strength component. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards I call it metabolic conditioning. So mm -hmm. you're burning calories, you're, you're, uh, you're increasing your fat burning. Mm -hmm. And what they call it, the uh, hypo hypo hypoxia, I think it is. Hypoxia, yeah. Yeah. So afterwards you got that, 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 that afterburn, they call it. Yep. And I was fine walking and cardio for me was always boring. Yep. But on the off days, if somebody wants to do it, I suggest doing it. Usually when I do my cardio-ish, I'll do it like, say I'll do a little bit of cardio on the, on the bike for like maybe 30 seconds. Then I'll jump on and do some ab workout, maybe some jumping jacks, jump onto the bike. Mm -hmm. But it's not like an hour of biking every morning. You know, I know the old time bodybuilders used to do it and they swear by it. Uh, new research are showing maybe you don't need to do all that. Put more effort into, if you only have a, a limited time of working out, put more effort into what's going right. to be better in the long run. Right, because it's not like everybody has three hours a day to work out. Exactly. And an hour and, an hour and a half to put in on the bike to but um, get that burn. On the other side of the coin, some people do not want to lift weights or work out. They just want to do cardio exercises. I had a, a client as well. She just wanted to do abs and cardio for the whole hour. So I'm like, okay. So I'll stand beside you. I'll tell you stories for a half hour and then we'll go do abs for half an hour and yeah. in my 
personal opinion, I don't think it was really beneficial, but she was very determined and that's what she hired me for just to do that. I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, if that's what you're paying for, I'll give you the best ab workout, the best cardio workout I could. Do I recommend it every single day or whichever? Right. Pro possibly not. And this is a great segue to young trainers, I think, because this is a lesson I learned as well. When I came in as a trainer, I thought, well, I'm going to teach the client what the client needs to know. And um, after a few aborted attempts to make this my marketing technique, I realized helping service the client in the way the client wants to be serviced is the best way possible. So I had one client who said to me one time, I just want to do triceps for an hour. I'd be like, all right, let's do triceps for an hour. You know, I got 82 exercises we can do with mm -hmm. that. Off you go. So the customer's always right, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. um, whether they want, if they if a customer leaves your facility feeling happy, fulfilled, and, 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 and like they've gotten their fitness goals achieved, um, I feel like everybody wins. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. Like there's some, which I like, they're like, Derek, I'm putting this in your hands. What, what do you suggest? That's fantastic. But then you have other people that like, I don't want to do legs because I walk every day. Yeah. I ride my bike every day. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with not training. Like we all make jokes about, hey, don't miss leg day. Yeah. But if your goal isn't to have strong jumbo legs and you're already kind of physically fit and you just want a nice upper body, yeah. hey, there's nothing really wrong with that. It's what their goals are. Mm -hmm. Not my goals. I love to have big, strong legs and, yeah. and you know, looks good in those speedos when you go to the beach, right? Yep. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very, very pleased with my legs as well. And I, and I work them as much as I can. But, you know, that being said, everybody's fitness journey is personal and all fitness is personal. So I, if somebody wants to get in the gym and do nothing but triceps an hour a day, I say, fill your boots, enjoy yourself, and I'll see you on the flip side. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's, that's a lot of what we do as trainers. We just help the clients achieve their best, uh, helping them do things they want to do. That's one of my favorite things to ask them. Like, is there an exercise you love? Is there something that, that, that you'd love doing? Cause then we'll do more of it, you know, dealer's choice. But sometimes that's, that's harder than it looks. So, um, we're going to move along now to, we're getting to the end of our time, um, for today, but we, We'd like to spend time on every Meatheads podcast, and this is no exception, discussing those things we don't like about fitness trends in the world. And Derek was feeling pretty good about life because his gym was open, so he couldn't really muster up anything that irritated him. Fortunately, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and I spent my Christmas holiday not going to a gym because they were locked down not only here in Gunawage, but all across Quebec. So... Um, I spent time on Instagram checking out people doing fit various fitness things. And I came across this one video. She's in the gym working out and her butt is unusually curvy. So the video stays on the lady. She does her Instagram video. And then as she's done, she takes these two butt molds out of yes. her pants and throws them away. And I said to myself, now I have seen everything. Yeah. And that, that actually makes me uh, bring up a good point on um, freak weights. Re okay yes perfect there's, there's a lot of people fake weights yeah i don't know if i can mention professional names online but um there's somebody on instagram some some guys he's pretty big but he claims to be one of the strongest bodybuilders he's in his 20s he looks phenomenal mm -hmm. but he's got maybe six plate bench press for reps and all these other pro powerlifters are calling it's fake calling bs yes so they'll go up to him with ten thousand dollars let's get this on kind right. of aggressively and he goes oh no i'm not here to show off I just lift what I lift, you know, and he would never step in. He'll bring his own camera, look at the, look at the weights himself, post on his Instagram. And he's again, curling, maybe 315, stuff like that. And it's like, you're putting people like, even say for myself or somebody's just working out like, man, am I really weak? Cause I'm only curling 60 pound barbell and this guy's doing 300 pounds. Like, is that what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I supposed to be that strong? Am I just very weak? And mm -hmm. you know, it could, you know, people could self-reflect on people like him and be like, I'm not doing it right, or I, I just suck at this. I'm going to quit. Same thing with those booty implants mm -hmm. or those those silicone, whatever they are. They're inserts. No, I call them molds. Yeah. So yeah, they're inserts. But yeah, basically that it, it 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 took the person's curves and accentuated them, which I guess is what generates currency these days in the online world. So I don't necessarily look at it, but I know a lot of people do, and I feel like the message needs to be hammered home. Don't look at other people for your own fitness validation. Exactly. Everybody 
is different and everybody is different. Mm -hmm. Their training, their nutrition is different. Their, their, their metabolism is different. Their genetics are different. Their, uh, their life is different. Don't look at someone else and hope they're going to validate you. That's, that's my one deep thought of the day. And, and, and one I've been considering and sitting on for a couple of weeks now, just waiting for the opportunity to rant on, uh, on a microphone with. So Okay, some people, they don't realize a lot of these pro athletes are a pro for a reason. They're 1% of the population. They might be able to put on muscle so fast. Like if you look at some of these uh, these bodybuilders and look at them when they're 13, 14, just working out, they look phenomenal. I'm like, wow, look at this guy. And you can't throw the, the drug name at a 13-year-old because they probably don't even know what that is at the time. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. I don't know. But I'll look at a, a famous bodybuilder, Jay Cutler. I looked at him when he was like 21 years old. I think I saw a picture of him and he had perfect shape. He wasn't jacked and ripped, but he had like the, the bone structure, the mm -hmm. perfect genetics. Yeah. Then over years, obviously, whatever they do to, to become bodybuilders, they, he just accentuated what he had and he looked phenomenal. Whereas you take uh, Joe Bundy from, uh, from the gym and give him the same supplements, the same routine, the same whatever they're taking. Mm -hmm. And he definitely will not look like him because it, they're, they're a genetic breed. They're, right. yeah. they're, they're designed for that yep and and most people are not aware but that 95 percent of your athletic potential is governed by your who your parents are mm -hmm. so there's only going to be so far you might be able to, to 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 get your athletic potential or your physique or your cardio hypoxia or your whatever it is you'd like to push higher your weight numbers your uh performance your you want to take weight down you want to look more ripped well I would say use yourself as in your, only yourself as a comparison. Exactly. Compare your old self to your new self and, and see what you have. And what I used to recommend to a lot of people recently, maybe because I'm getting older, it's like <laughs> instead of grinding in the gym and trying to add an extra pound of muscle every mm -hmm. year and, and tearing your arms and tearing your bicep or whichever, turn it around and go lighter, trim off some body weight, yeah. and you'll probably look 100% better, leaner, smaller than bigger and not lean, let's say. Right. You know, and, we, and you'll likely enjoy yourself a lot more. Exactly. That's why I'm trying to get back to my original 215 weight from yeah. 240. So it's, 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 a, it's a slow process, but I'm in no rush. In no you know, rush at all. No. And you know what? Um, the journey is yours and yours alone. And, and you know, I think that's, that's a marvelous thing that all of us are faced with. Yeah. Um, because as we like to say around here, movement is medicine and probably does more good than harm even if there's a nasty virus um, floating around i'd like to wrap this one up by saying thank you to derek delille as always the ceo of total fitness which is open right here in gunawage thank you and uh, my name is mark lalone and this has been meatheads thanks very much for listening and have a great day thanks for listening to meatheads and please please check out our other podcasts on apple spotify or google or anywhere you listen to podcasts check out the front page profiles, and the beating table. The views and opinions of the guests expressed in this podcast do not reflect those of your DWSA and its employees.